Aloha. Welcome again to another edition of Gil Gets It Done. My name is Gil Riviere. I'm the representative for the North Shore of Oahu. And uh, today with me today, we have the Hawaiian kids and uh, their fearless leader, Glenn Lee. We uh, are on site at uh, Wailua High School, an intermediate school. To, uh, today we're going to be talking about um, the robotics program here. We're going to be uh, showing a demonstration of the equipment. We're going to be talking uh, to some of the actual, uh, shall we say, engineers or the performers, the artists who make, uh, make this all happen. So welcome, uh, welcome to the show, everybody. How's it going? Good. And, thank you for uh, coming. Thank you for, uh, thanks for allowing us to be here today. Would you uh, like to go first and uh, introduce uh, Glenn Lee, right? The, uh, what is your title here? And, uh, and go about the history of how you came to be with this program at this school at this time. Okay. Well, my name is Glenn Lee. Uh, I'm a science teacher here at the school. I've been here for 18 years now, and 12 years ago, uh, we, had, we were introduced to this program called FIRST Robotics. And so, because I had a background in electrical engineering and a business degree, a master's in business, uh, I was asked to be part of this team in which uh, we could offer robotics here or, or a robotics program here at our school. And so, um, you know, it, it, at first it became a year-to-year -year thing because it was, you know, for the early years it was such a struggle to try to incorporate and build a robot with very little expertise and help. But over the years, we've been able to garner more support, uh, more mentors, uh, funding, uh, other kinds of in-kind donations and supports to be, able, to be able to develop our program and offer uh, more things to more kids, um, which we currently have today. Great. So you, you've been going about 12 years with the, with the robotics program itself. Yes. yes. And uh, you started from humble beginnings of, of, of just putting together uh, um, were they, were they pretty rudimentary machines, or how, how complex were they now, and how, how far has it gone in, in, the, in these 12 years? Well, I think when we first started uh, during our rookie year, which was during the 1999-2000 season, uh, we, had, we went to our first competition. It was pretty tough. Um, our robot didn't work um, ideally the way we wanted it to, but we, uh, we did make new friends, and we, we took the time to... Um, not only just compete at those competitions, but what we did was try to learn from other teams that had more experience. And so we try to incorporate at every tournament that we do ideas and things that other people do and try to incorporate it into our own program to, to become better. And so that's really what was instrumental in helping our team become better and, and, and to also now develop some of our own things, unique things that other teams uh, can, can look at and try to emulate. And you know, we, we also try to share also at the same time. It's a fantastic program. Would you like to introduce uh, some of some of the uh, young people here that are that are with us today, and um, maybe you guys could tell us a little bit about your experience this year um, with the robotics program? Okay, so to my left we have Rebecca Barone, who just recently graduated from from our program. Uh, she she was a third year member, and uh, she's here today because she can talk a little bit about her experiences this past year, uh, since we had a pretty good season, and she can also talk about how she's going going to um, actually mentor our, our, our current kids today. She, um, because she's had such a great uh, experience in our program, she's offered to help us as a mentor now. Oh, wow, that's tremendous. Yeah. And we also, we also have John here. Uh, John is a third-year member of our team as a junior in high school, and he, and he can talk a little bit more about the technical aspects of, of the program and the robot. Okay. okay? Re Rebecca, thank you. Hi. Thank you for coming, Representative Riviere. We're really lucky to have you. And as Mr. Lee said, um, this is actually going to be my fourth year. I'm mentoring, and I'm attending the University of Hawaii. And I actually got a scholarship to go to the University of Hawaii because we did so well this past year. Uh, we did travel to New York City, where we competed um, for the Chairman's Award. And we won in New York City, which allowed us to continue on to St. Louis where we competed against teams from all over the world, and we actually took home the championship chairman's award. This award is 12 years in the making. Everything we've done um, as far as our program, building the program we have today, has been going towards this award, and it involves helping a lot of um, organizations, mentoring a lot of teams, and of course, the thing we're most famous for, our sustainability. Excellent. 
Um, so this award um, comes with the perpetual clock that we showed you earlier. And it also came with the Allaire Medallion um, from Paul Allaire. And what he does is he gives a scholarship to one member on the Chairman's Award presentation team. Okay. And it's $10,000. Wow. So, okay, so you guys had a, a pretty successful year, I think. Um, it, it, it's great to, to support a winning program, but you guys have really built something here. Um, you don't win every tournament, but you guys are always in the running. Is that safe to say? You're, you're always a threat to, to, to win the tournament. We always try. We always try to be in the running. I know we want to be humble, but, you know, uh, success speaks for itself. So, thanks. John, how about you? What you uh, uh, which part of this program do you uh, make happen? So, my official title would be Lead Control Systems. I do the programming, electronics, and pneumatics. So, I'm doing the things that actually make the robot move. Most of the structure is done by construction, but I'll do all the, um, I help with the wiring, and I write all the code myself. So if something is, is, is got a twitch, got a nervous twitch, you're the guy that has to figure out why? I'll be the guy to troubleshoot that. Make it work. Well, obviously, you're doing well. The whole team is doing well. You guys got good drivers, and it takes the whole team, right? But it, it, it all comes back down to science, technology, and math, doesn't it? I mean, it, it comes down to some fundamentals. Maybe, Glenn, you'd like to uh, talk a little bit about, about that as far as how, how, how do you have to calculate all this and get it done? Why, why is this important for kids learning, and what future do they have? You mentioned some of that earlier today. It was interesting because there was an article about our Wailo High School um, several years ago, and it had talked about how no one from Wailua would even apply for some kind of engineering program after high school. Ever since we started our program in the 1999-2000 school year, we've had a lot more kids major in STEM-related fields. Again, like you said, science, technology, engineering, and math. For our program, I think what makes it unique is that we have a lot of different areas other than just building robots. So we don't just have a programmer, a person that's you know, constructing the robot, uh, we, we have people that, are, that do video editing. We have graphics people on our team. We have people that want to go into arts and communication. They do interviews. They do outreach. We share our ideas with other teams. And so it's a pretty well-rounded program that allows our kids different opportunities to go into different areas depending on what they're interested in. And so I think we've kind of established that over the last, especially the last five years, where we can offer more credits and more areas just using robotics as a vehicle to get our kids to do these things. And so the, the proof in the pudding is we have, a, you know, 90% of our kids now up, at least apply or try to attend and get into some kind of post-secondary program. That's tremendous. And that really is in part, a huge part of it is because of our program that we've been able to um, inspire kids. And again... Um, trying to spread ourselves out to doing more areas so that we can attract more kids that are interested. So the, ro the robot is just the thing to attract the kids. Right. But in the end, what we want our kids to do is to go on and do bigger and better things um, once they finish high school. I've, I've heard some anecdotal uh, stories very similar to that, such as other, other, other schools, I won't, won't say which, but uh, other schools where they didn't have a program. And people just, a lot of kids just weren't showing up for school. But all of a sudden, they had this program, and suddenly learning had become fun. And there was kids, attendance gets better, the, the morale, the, just to be in the program, you gotta, you've got to apply yourself, right? And so it's true. people are showing up, they're, they're learning, they're having fun learning. And, and I think uh, you mentioned there's people that are getting high position jobs now um, based on their experiences and, and springboard that this provides. Yeah? You know, you brought up a good point. I just wanted to add that I think what makes our program also unique is that we accept any kid that has the heart and desire to want to be part of something and to learn. We do not look at test scores when we accept kids in our program. We've had a range of valedictorians to almost high school dropouts, to kids that um, have flunked some years, special ed kids, doesn't matter. If you have the heart and desire to want to be part of something big and to want to learn and grow and work as a team, be responsible and those kinds of things, um, this is the right program for them. And so we've been able to turn around a lot of kids as a result of this program. And so that, to me, is, is, the, is the biggest reason why we do this program. Excellent. 
Um, and the program has grown. Wailua uh, uh, and a few other schools have, have been at it for 12 years, but it, uh, several years ago, the, uh, it, it got big, right? It hit that flash point where just about all, most of the schools now want to do it. And, and, and so the competition is getting um, more intense. There's more people participating. Uh, we saw earlier today, you guys took us on a tour of the school, that there's so many kids wanting to participate that it's hard to field enough teams, um, partly due to financial constraints. Right. Okay, so the, the program is so successful that we have a hard time now keeping enough money to feed uh, the success. Um, right. So do you want I don't know if you, you want to talk a little bit about that, but the grant writing you've done and the money you've been able to bring in has really made this program, but it's getting harder, isn't it, with the economy and Definitely. finances and such? Uh, we've had a combination of grants, um, companies that sponsor our team, fundraisers that we do. Uh, we, 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 we've even had an annual... Um, luau that we had, fundraiser luau for our program. A lot of those areas are now no longer um, available to us. And so I think part of what makes us strong is that we always look for other avenues and other more creative ways to keep our program going. We've said five years ago that we weren't going to continue. Uh, but every year it's a new challenge. Uh, we find some new opportunity. We try our best to, to get out there. You know, you're only going to find opportunities if you, if you uh, take the time to go out and do events like these and, and, and to go out and talk to people. And so the money's out there. It might be a little harder to find, but I'm very confident that with our team and with our support and the people that help our program, we're able to continue to run at the level that we are at now. And, and hopefully even more so because we have so many more kids that want to join our program. It's part of the real world challenge, I think. You know, you've got, yes. you know, you got economic downturns, you got economic upturns and money's easy and living's, living's fat and happy, but um, sometimes you got to pull it back in and still be successful, right? You can't, you can't just, you can't just say, well, it's too hard. I'm going to give up. You've, you've got to make it work. Um, can I bring it back to you guys uh, now? And I want to say, I know that when they announced the program, um, there's the VEX program, the first robotics, and there's, there's a couple different programs at different times a year, but you guys get up at what four in the morning or something to find out the unveiling of the project how does that work because uh, the enthusiasm is unbelievable well um, we actually every team in hawaii that goes to kickoff we have to travel to mckinley high school and being that we are quite a distance from mckinley high school we have to get up at four in the morning and we all pile into the bus or we pile into the vans driven by mentors and head on over to mckinley and the broadcast is usually at about six Five or six a.m. Yeah. Well, because world, because it's world. aired um, on the East Coast, so it's about noon there, but six o'clock our time. So we have to get up early so that we can find out what the game is. And you know, I've never seen a team more excited than when they're going to kick off, because they wait all year to find out what the new game is going to be. And mm -hmm. then as soon as they find out what the game is, you know, as soon as kickoff's over, sometimes there's workshops after for the rookie teams, but. As soon as we're done, we head back over here and we brainstorm about what the game's going to be. While the game is still fresh in your mind, we break up into groups and we go over, you know, what do we want to do? What don't we want to do? What do we need to have? All the things that we're going to have to put into work for the next six weeks. So that anticipation of building up to that. I mean, just that, that day, opening day, it's, it's, it's the... Um, Everybody's pretty pumped up. I'll bet, I'll bet. So well, what they you do... Have six weeks to, to get it together for the tournament? Exactly, six weeks um, to... Design, build, program, test drive, build all the parts. You have six weeks to make a robot that is capable of competing. Hey, John, how's that uh, changing the, the mechanics every year? Because every year there's a different game, right? Yes. One year it's follow the, the course. One year it's throwing giant balls. One year it's stealing things. How, how do you find that? As a, the couple of years you've been involved with this now, with each year's new challenge, is it uh, more frustrating, less frustrating? Is it getting easier, or is it just... Tell us about that. Well, with each year, they try to um, change up the game, but it does get slightly easier as you do learn more. And the knowledge is passed down from the more senior team members mm -hmm. down to the newer kids through transition mentoring. Maybe RV can talk to you about that more later. So but um, yeah. basically, the more ideas you have, the more kids you have learning this stuff. When we do our brainstorming session, it's all about what we want to do for the game, how we want to go about doing it, and what our design will be so that we can. Excellent. So earlier you just seen the robot score these inflatable tubes on the rack. 
and it was done in a certain way, triangle, circle, square, which is the logo for the first robotics program. So they had inner tubes specifically designed for the game so that you could score it in a particular order. The reason why you want to do that is so you get more points. Now towards the end of every game and every year, there's some kind of bonus points you can get. Now we haven't talked about this earlier, but I'll let you, I'll let you uh, zoom in on the robot and you can see how we get our bonus points. We're going to watch. So right now he's using a camera to aim the robot. There's actually a camera in the back. And uh, the camera is what the drivers use in order to align themselves up to this pole here. And we'll let you see how the robot gets its bonus points. So get ready to pan or tilt. Okay, go. So as you can see, there's a little mini bot on there. And the team that gets up there first gets the most bonus points. And you can, there's a total of four poles on the field, the actual field. And so with six robots, the first four robots can get their mini bot up in the towers and get the bonus points. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate the mini bot going up again. Okay, here we go. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. And there you have it. Okay, so that's, uh, that's our show for today. Gil gets it done. Thank you very much for tuning in, and it's been a privilege to be here at Waialua High School to talk with the Hawaiian kids and uh, their leader, Glenn Lee. Uh, thank you all very much for uh, making this show so great, for all the, the staff support and all the kids who make it great. Uh, you guys have anything to say about this? Well, thank you for having us. I mean, or thank you for uh, coming by and allowing us to share a little bit about our program. Okay, you guys? One, two, three. Imua, Wailua!